this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome into Five on the Floor Live. You're catching this live on the Five Reasons YouTube channel or on the podcast feeds afterwards. Of course, we are on Red Circle as well as Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. Make sure you check out FiveReasonsSports.com as well. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feeds, make sure you check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We are sponsored today, as always, by our friends over at Prize Picks. Make sure you use the code 5 F I V E. Get your initial deposit matched up to a hundred dollars. You don't have to play all hundred at once. You don't even have to put down a hundred. You can put down 20 if you want. They'll match your 20. But this is free money. There's no rollovers. This was just rated the number one fastest growing sports product in the country. We have special shows called Prize Picks on Five to teach you how to play. You would have gone over with Jimmy and Bam and others tonight, not with Tyler though, but you would have gone over with a lot of those and we can sort of tell you how to play it night to night. Again, use that code five F I V E get your initial deposit matched up to a hundred dollars. Here's today's floor plan. Again, we are going live. These episodes are a little bit looser on our typical off day episodes. I've got Alex Toledo below me here on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, you can follow him at Tropical Blanket. I've got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. i got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. We've got Alejandro Villegas is our producer today on the YouTube side, and he will be posting your comments. If you, if you use the Super Chat function, we will definitely read them. The Miami Heat lose tonight 123 to 110 to the Golden State Warriors. And this is going to be an interesting one to evaluate, I think. Because there are no moral victories for teams that are trying to win a championship and claim they are contenders. And yet I kind of feel tonight was one. Um, to me, this was a build on the Portland game. This was a more connected team that we saw at home. They were competitive throughout. Then Steph kind of went nuts during like a two minute sequence and they never really got back off the mat. But tremendous performance overall from Jimmy. I thought Bam was extremely aggressive at times. He was just turning into that jumper without any hesitation. Uh, I thought Kyle had good moments tonight. I thought Max had good moments. I thought Caleb had good moments. Uh, I thought Tyler was kind of a disaster tonight, which we will get into. And I think if they get a more normal Tyler hero game, then they they probably win this thing, actually. But I'll go to you first on this, Greg. Um, again, they're playing the defending champions who are not playing particularly well when Miami came in, by the way. They've been giving up a ton of points. Miami got 110 tonight. Uh, what was your feeling on their overall performance? I was encouraged because, like, second night of a back-to-back, you're playing the world champs at home. We know that they can, you know, blitz a team offensively at any moment. And so the fact that they were as competitive as they were throughout – and, the, and also, you're continuing to see Spo try different things um, or lean into things more as, as games go by that I think are building blocks to how they can play and how they can be successful. So I just, like, to me, seeing Bam be aggressive and take those mid-range shots, even if he misses a few of them, although he was 10 of 13 – um, and got eight free throws. Like that's that's huge. Jimmy was awesome tonight. He was so connected on both ends of the floor. So to me, like it was a win to see that. Tyler Hero, we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But just for me overall, uh, the one thing that jumps out is the zone that they're using to. Um, it, it basically saved them in a lot of ways. It did leave them susceptible on the boards. And that's like something that I just think is going to be an ongoing issue. Like, how do you handle the rebounds um, game over game if you're going to be going to some of the more gimmicky stuff? So, but we're not hanging our heads when we lose to the Golden State Warriors and Steph went Steph. Steph does what Steph does. I mean, come on. That's why he's a world champion. And uh, so I'm I'm encouraged. Are you encouraged, Alex? Yeah, I think you could say that because I think some things have come around. Not everything, right? Like, I think, again, they did a pretty good job with the turnovers tonight just in comparison to the Warriors. But like Leif was saying, 
they got destroyed on the boards. I think I was looking at it right now. I think they got out rebounded by 21. I was double taking and triple taking because like I'm trying to get ready for the show, so everything is happening quickly. And I'm like, I, this can't be right. And like, because it felt like they got out rebounded, but by 21 is absolutely insane. And we know that they went small there towards the end. But that's not the only reason. It's the, the zone was taking them out of um, position, and they're just very scrambled there. The thing with the, the Heat defense is that it's built to get teams to scramble. The Warriors live in scramble mode. That is what they do. Like, they have guys who have been reacting to teams with all sort of defensive coverages over the years, right? Like, they're used to this. And they have guys who can pick those things apart. And they have guys who will shoot, <laughs> right, who will shoot you out of the zone and, and completely – destroy the zone or if not pick you apart with the layups like they, they know how to react to different things and although the heat got going there with a little bit of that zone stuff i'm not saying that was the reason they lost or anything like that it, it was cool to see um spo go back and forth they're trying to figure out what the solution was so you know tyler got cooked by steph i'm not gonna say it was only tyler but tyler every single time that steph got the matchup it felt like it, it just 100 of the time there was a bucket coming whether it was from steph or somebody else once the heat overreacted. So, you know, there's some things that were predictable like that, right? That's that's not um, uncommon at all. Tyler getting hunt, hunted by some of the best scorers in the world. And look, he's done a pretty good job this season. I just think the heat in general, you know, when they try one thing, some other things will leak, right? And so, you know, the, they ended up, even though I thought it was a pretty good defensive effort, the Warriors shot like 50% from the field and 39 from three or something like that. So, you know, it was a good effort. They competed, and then it just got away from them at the end. Brady, we talk about the zone, and it is something that they go to you know, on occasion. Uh, there are certain teams it works better against than others. This wouldn't typically be the team I would think that they would do it. But how much of this was personnel-based to you in terms of who they had and who they didn't have tonight? Oh, I'd say it's 100% personnel-based. And I don't know if it's that what they didn't have tonight. Well, it kind of is because I think yurt has been – could definitely help on the boards, like when we talk about that. Like, I'm not sitting here saying uh, they win this game if they have Omar Yurt swings. That type of stuff is crazy. But the the amount of uh, uh, the magnet that he is around the boards, like they could use that tonight. And it was 50 to 31 to Alex's point on the boards, like which is just wild to me. Uh, and when you talk about personnel, like uh, I made the joke that Jimmy uh, said he didn't want to play the four and he ended up playing the five tonight. But like, it isn't even a joke because he legitimately was basically playing the five. Like, how do you expect to, you know? be even on the boards in that way uh, if that's the route you're going. But I guess when you have this type of roster construction at this current moment, you're trying to sacrifice that for another element of, of kind of speed, versatility, offense. Uh, that's just kind of the way you have to go. And especially against a Warriors team that is so dynamic, like you kind of have to. Because if you try to match their style of play by any means, you're going to lose. Like that's kind of how it was. Like I early in the game when – Jimmy hit a three, and then Steph comes down and hit a three. I'm like, okay, well, that's that's not a good sign. Because if you get into that sort of match, it's not going to be good. But tonight, he, he kind of did match them from three because Jimmy was just playing that type of uh, game in general. Uh, my thoughts on the zone were, were interesting, too, because I thought it stopped them in a lot of ways. I love I love the press that they run because it the way it pressures them, like the goal isn't to get a steal. The goal is to just their first action comes with 14 to 15 seconds left. That is what you want against the Warriors team. Like you want them starting late, playing against the clock, not being that free flowing offense. So I thought I thought that type of stuff was good. Uh, I thought maybe they should have got out of it quicker at times, which is just that Monday night quarterback thing. Like you you can't really react in the moment to uh, a free flowing type of game. But uh, the Warriors against the zone is just hard to predict because the, the way they can shoot the basketball, like the way to, to beat a zone is just like ball movement and kicking out to the top of the keys and kind of spraying and. Once they started hitting those type of shots, like like Moses Moody was hitting, like uh, it's hard to kind of keep it going there. So uh, I definitely say a lot of this stuff was personnel based. But uh, to Greg's point before, like you got a very good Jimmy Butler game. Like I'd say an elite Jimmy Butler game when you were looking at the stats. Uh, I was saying before that when you look at watch Jimmy Butler defensively in a game, you know what level he's at, like what level he's trying to play at. Because the way he was hitting those passing lanes and those gaps was like, okay, we know Jimmy knows that this is the time where they have to try to – they're playing hard. They were trying to get these kind of wins. Uh, so, obviously, those were the good signs. Like, Jimmy Jimmy Butler being able to play at this level, uh, Bam being able to play at this level. But then I just want to say last thing. I looked at the minutes, and I'm like, Jimmy plays 37, Caleb 29, Bam 38, Lowry and Hero 33 and 32. 
Max Struz, 32 off the bench. And then it tails off. Like, it just really tails off. So, second night, basically, like, that's what it is. But it's early in the season, so they can do it. But it's also second night of a back-to-back where it's like, I'm not – I wouldn't expect this to see this type of layout, like, before the game. That would not have been my prediction. But, obviously, that's just the way the game kind of went in general. So, uh, I guess I, I'd say the same thing. I think I'm pretty much encouraged, I guess, with those type of guys. But, in general, with certain small elements of this, I think we can all agree there's still some things to adjust. All right. Let, let's just dig into Jimmy here real quick, and then uh, I want to have the Tyler Hero conversation because these are the kind of games that Tyler needs to play big in, and he did not play big tonight, and we need to acknowledge it. But let's just touch on Jimmy for a second because we know he plays big in these kind of games. And it frustrated me to watch it because if they'd made one, if he'd made one more three at the end of that Boston series, we would have got to see this last year in the finals. And I think the Heat were too beat up at that point to beat Golden State. But I would have liked to see Jimmy Butler try to do what Jason Tatum could not. That It would have been a lot of fun to watch it. And it's it's sort of sad that we didn't get to see it. Uh, but we talk about his performance tonight. I mean, it's exactly what you want in this kind of game. I mean, you know, because when he's he, when he's playing the passing lanes like that and getting steals and energizes everybody, I, I don't think he's going to hit four threes again uh, anytime soon. But the form looks pretty decent right now. It, it makes me a little nervous, Craig, uh, for them because he starts to fall in love with it. But yeah. like Blaine used to. But how, like it's how, good to know it's there, I guess. No, that's true. I mean, I'm never going to turn down a four of seven Jimmy Butler three point night. I think it's super funny that all those IG videos throughout uh, the summer showed him kind of shooting this flat footed set shot where he doesn't really jump. And people thought, oh, that wasn't going to be something he would do when the games happen. And he's kind of leaning into that in a really big way. And um, if it works for him, that's great. To Brady's point earlier, this was a complete game from both Jimmy and Bam. So, like, when I say I'm encouraged, I recognize that they lost this game by double digits. Like, it's not moral victories, Ethan. You're right. That's not what this is about. But when you see your two top players start to round into form and you know that you're playing against good competition that played good minutes, um, you know, that's like the things that you want to see versus the team just folding on the second night of a back-to-back and something like that. So uh, Jimmy Butler is elite. They had 10 – Jimmy and Bam combined for 10 steals. Like, that's just incredible. Uh, you had something you wanted to say on Jimmy, Alex? Yeah, I mean, first of all, definitely uh, one of Jimmy's best games, just especially in the regular season. He just absolutely dominated. And I think between him and Bam, like, they both gave you – a plus performances from you know what you expect from them in the regular season like those were playoff level big games on both ends of the floor with the amount of stuff that they were you know executing on on both ends so it was awesome to see and even though Lowry didn't give you <clears throat> big time scoring excuse me I, I thought he had a really nice performance all around as a playmaker as a defender with the three steals as well and he's he's everywhere so it was cool to see him um, step his game up again versus um, better competition but just what I wanted to say was you know one of the things I didn't mention before to be encouraged by is their defensive effort and, and although again you got cooked by the best shooter of all time I thought not only Jimmy and Bam and Kyle I thought the team defensive effort was pretty good it's just cool to see them try to um, get back to that defensive identity and get back out in transition even though the Warriors kind of um, closed that gap in the second half that the the Heat had in, in the you know transition that they were killing them in the first half was specifically in that second quarter. Like the 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 biggest number that I noticed here, and I put this in our chat here, is that although the I'm gonna give I'm gonna give them this, the Heat got to the free throw line seven more times than the Warriors. Their shot profile tonight was 80 jump shots when you combine from the mid range and from three, and seven shots at the rim. Again, they got to the free throw line 22 times, seven more times than the Warriors. So that's why some of those numbers are a little weird. But still, that's a testament to the Warriors' defense. And we've talked true. before about how um, these types of defenses can get the heat in, into you know different types of shot profiles that they're not used to. We saw it with Boston in a different way, and w- which happened in the conference finals, right? A team that will force a ton of mid-range shots, and now. Uh, this time it's the Warriors don't really let you get to the rim. Like they're going to switch everything and they're going to have guys rotate and they're going to have you, um, you know, take a lot more jump shots than maybe you would expect to. 
All right, we're going to get to Tyler Hero here in a second. Before we do, I want to tell you about another sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network and of this particular program, Five on the Floor, our friend Lynette. You can find her at insurancebylynette.com. There's the phone number, 954-581-8800. She's always smiling, and she can help you get your insurance. So we mentioned all the different types of insurance that she can help you get, the condo, the homeowners, the life insurance, the retirement programs that they offer there, been to that office They've got everything that you could possibly need Been servicing South Florida for over 15 years. Uh, but really what I tell people is the auto insurance. Um, I know people who don't have the best driving records. I've sent them to her and she has found them insurance when I did not think that was actually possible. And she also explains it really clearly. And she's also a huge Miami Heat fan. You find her commenting on our stream. So reach out to her at insurancebylanette.com. That's insurancebylanette.com, 954-581-8800. All right, Brady, let's have the Tyler Hero conversation because, you know, we're talking about $120 million now. The expectation level is different. I know he doesn't have his money yet, and that comes in next year, but it's guaranteed. It is promised. And, you know, he's had – I thought he's played well so far this season up until tonight, actually. Even in the last game where his minutes were cut short, um, I thought he played well. I think he's been more active off the ball defensively. I like the transition to the starting lineup. We talked about how the, the transition has been more difficult for Lowry than it has been for Hero, really. Um, and everything has looked good in that regard. Tonight, there's just no way around it. He was bad. Like, there's just, I mean, we were texting about it on the string. Like, he was bad in virtually every way. He was bad defensively. Um, he was bad offensively. It wasn't just that he was missing shots. He wasn't getting to his spots. He seemed kind of flippant with a lot of the things he was doing. He didn't seem purposeful to me. You know, you can kind of tell with him. When he is, he never really got on a run. And against a team like Golden State, you need all of these guys. And, you know, again, it comes against a team. There's been the Jordan Poole comparison. Uh, he wasn't the guy that hurt the Heat the most tonight. But I, I just – I don't know. I, I want to see more from him in some of these games. You know, against Detroit on a Tuesday night, I'm not really interested anymore. I, I, I want to see it here. Yeah, you mentioned just uh, before about, like, where he was kind of bad at in terms of his entire game. But that was the issue to me. It was like the shot making early, not falling, like bled into everything else the rest of the game. Like that's what set out to me because when he gets off his game in that way and then all of a sudden you, you, you mentioned just not being intentional or purposeful, uh, he's not going to be better defensively. Like we've seen moments where he's better off ball. That's when he's got a little bit you know, more juice to him and he's hitting shots and he's playing better defensively. Like that's not what you're going to see when shots are, are uh, missing early. And Alex touched on earlier the numbers uh, with the shots at the rim. That was what stood out to me more than anything else with Tyler tonight is that Golden State specifically was not letting Tyler get to the rim. And what does that mean for Tyler? It's just not a good formula because you're just basically betting on tough shots to fall, which a lot of nights uh, it works for him because he's a tough shot maker. So it can work on nights, but consistently uh, when the team does that to him, it just is what it is at that point that you're going to have to bet on something else. And uh, the three-point shots obviously weren't falling again tonight, one for five. Uh, so it kind of just bled into everything else. So uh, you mentioned just needing more, I guess, from him in these games. And I definitely agree. I've actually thought Greg pointed out on our off the floor string uh, before it happened. He was kind of saying that he believes Gabe could potentially close this game after with, with seeing the way he was playing. And I was like, I totally agree. Like I was looking at it, like the way Gabe started playing it, a tough step back. He was getting to the rim. He's playing good defensively on guys like Steph and other guys. And all of a sudden they made the sub and got him out, which I'm like, I'm not like totally mad at like it's Tyler Hero. You need tough shot making at the end of the game. Like that's not like it's a bad decision. But then we saw what happened afterward, where it was like he started getting picked on a little bit. They started basically saying we're going to take his this, whoever he's guarding to be the screener just to get him on because they weren't even going to try to fight through the screen. Which it was like part of me was like yeah it's Steph, but then the other part of me was like like maybe don't just give it up that easy. Like don't just let Steph Curry just go to work on Tyler Hero in isolation every play. So. Uh, there was a little kind of stuff like that, but obviously, uh, I will add in though, everybody's had a bad game on this roster so far. Tyler just had his first one come tonight, which it was just on a night that I think everybody was kind of clicking together and they needed this one on the road in Golden State. It would have been a good win. Uh, but now he, he kind of has his one game that he kind of has plays, uh, pretty bad, but, uh, it stood out. I think that the only two turnovers tonight, which when I say the only two is because a lot of the guy, other guys on this roster, obviously, uh, bam, 
I know this is a side note and I'm kind of getting off track here, but I just looked over again. Another night where Bama's five turnovers. Like this is becoming a little bit of a trend here. It's been like five, five, three, three, and five, I think. If I have no, you right. know where it's happening though? You know what's happening? It's funny. There, there are aggressive turnovers. I used to talk to Dwayne and LeBron about this, and they were okay with a certain number of turnovers if they were aggressive mm. turnovers. The turnovers with Bam, uh, some of them are when he's getting trapped uh, in the post and he's just, he's not quick to react to it. Like, I actually thought a lot of his reactions tonight were better, like him stepping into the jump shot, you know, uh, uh, which is something Jovic did too, uh, you know, at the free throw line and all that. But like his reaction when the trap comes is he, he needs to improve on that. He does not have strong hands when he puts them down low. We've seen that before. And, and even when, and then when he gets it up high, and I, I just thought his reaction to it was, was sluggish tonight. That's where some of the turnovers are. I don't mind the aggressive stuff when he's he's you know he's dribbling. He's trying to get them into offense. Okay, yeah. sometimes it happens on on the dribble handoffs. Okay, I I, I understand some of that's going to happen. But as far as him getting trapped and not reacting to it, that's problematic. He, he should he should be at three a game. Okay, if he's at one a game, he's not doing enough in my view. He he should be at at, at two or three a game. Five is too many. Um, I'm going to wait for Alex here when we get to our performance solution of the game. So. Uh, we're gonna think about that a little bit. I do just Greg, do you want to close the loop on Hero before we do that? Yeah, because I think you guys are on like Tyler Hero needs to be held to a different standard and he needs to step up in games like this. He looked kind of like he was in awe of Steph Curry in, in certain moments, and like he felt like he was overwhelmed. Um, and maybe that was just the way that the avalanche felt at the end, but he had a bad game. But this is the beauty of the NBA. Uh, and you know, Brady said it's his one bad game. He'll probably have a few more because that's what guys do. But Tuesday, November 1st, next week, Golden State will be in Miami. And I'm very interested to see how Tyler Hero approaches that matchup again because he'll have the, another opportunity. Um, but you know, so it's hard to like get too ugly towards Tyler's performance when it's just an isolated incident like today. But obviously the playoffs tell as well. So um, we need to see better play from him. Uh, you're totally right. And the other thing about Bam, he needs to tighten the handle. Every once in a while he turns yeah. up faces and his first dribble that's like supposed to create separation and get him going towards the basket, he just like loses the ball. And he does it over and over again. So that's something that those um, things that that's when I that's when I most understand Spo for not ever mm -hmm. using them as a scorer. It's like, oh, that's why. No, I think there are real reasons for it, but there's also improvement that is, is expected in that area. And look, we are talking about these guys differently now. Bam is getting the max money now. Tyler is going to get the max money, right? Jimmy has the max money. Lowry has essentially max for his age at point guard. The expectation level on those four guys is going to be higher than everybody else. We can stop talking about Duncan Robinson or Caleb Martin's contract. It's about those four guys. Those are the four guys that have to produce in these kind of games. They got it from Jimmy. They mostly got it from, from uh, Bam. I thought Kyle was fine tonight, even though I, again, think Gabe was better. Okay, which is a conversation we're going to continue to have as the season goes on. Uh, and Tyler was just not good enough. And against a team like that on the road, you need all four, or at least you need three and a half out of the four. And and uh, they got close, but they didn't quite get there. All right, new segment here on the show. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. It's a new sponsor. You can find them at odmpsi.com. That's ODM Performance Solutions. This is a consulting company, um, and they're big fans of the podcast here, big Miami Heat fans based down here in South Florida. That's the website. Cool site. You can see Miami ODM PSI.com. That's ODM PSI.com. If you're looking to fill an important role at your company, ODM performance solutions is going to help you find C-suite level leadership, sales, rainmakers, plus management and operational support staff. So you can check out the website or give them a call at 954-434-0634. They'll help you build a winning team and keep it together. All right. Uh, what we're going to do again today is the performance solution of the game. Give me one thing that Spolstra could have done tonight, Alex, that might have changed the outcome, or one thing you liked that he did uh, that got them close. Hmm. Well, um, I don't think one specific thing would have maybe changed the outcome. I think that he just needed to make more shots, and in general, they got thrown off their game, but... Definitely was interested to see Spo once again go with the super small ball stuff 
um, there. And this time without Haywood Highsmith, you know, he uses some of his better wings uh, for that lineup. So that was interesting. Um, I thought it was interesting also in a not of a negative type of way, but in a like hmm type of way because um, they went to that again at the end of the game to give, I mean, you know, towards the, end, uh, the middle of the fourth quarter to give Bam some rest there before bringing him back to close the game. And I just thought it was interesting that he went with that instead of Nikola Jovic, who, you know, obviously had his rookie moments again, just like he did uh, last night versus Portland, but showed that he can keep up. So, and the Warriors at that point were playing Kevon Looney. So it's not like they were playing a super small ball lineup where it felt like Jovic would be outmatched. And not that I'm, you know, doubting Spo for doing that because it makes sense, you know, to have your, more mobile defensive lineups out there while while Bam is it on the floor, especially because you they literally don't have another back of five other than the 19 year old Nikola Jovic. But um, I, I would have liked for him to have played there, and also the zone stuff, by the way, because I think that's something that's going to be uh, you know we're going to have to monitor that throughout the rest of the season, see how much Spo goes to it and when he goes to it, because I I, I want to see when he feels the need to go to zone and what are the patterns there. I think that's all good points there. And again, going to the super small stuff is something we talked about that we thought he might do this season. It seems like he's been forced a little bit to do it. So we close tonight, 123 to 110. The Warriors beat the Heat. We appreciate everybody joining us tonight. We are trying to keep these to about 30 minutes. So make sure you catch us early, okay? We're going to go right at the buzzer or like two minutes after the buzzer, get started. We want to do that so we get this to you right away, but also – because it goes to the podcast feed right afterwards. So those who don't watch on YouTube can catch it on the podcast feed. That's kind of the point this year. And you can listen to it in the morning as well. We know most of you got about a 30-minute commute. So we want to fill your commute and then get on to the next one. Obviously, no game uh, coming up tomorrow. So we will try to produce a regular podcast perhaps uh, you know, and put that on the feed. And then it will go to the YouTube channel afterwards. Thanks to our sponsors, A Aggressive Insurance, ODM Performance Solutions, and prize picks. Use that code F-I-V-E. Have a good night, everybody.